For this episode of Fish Poker, we go to Las Vegas, Nevada, where we go on and stay at the Treasure Island Hotel and Casino located right on the Strip. We go on and pay $130 for two nights, which is an amazing deal, considering we got a room on the 36th floor that overlooked the north side of the Las Vegas Strip. This view was freaking awesome. And not only that, there's nothing to complain in the cleanliness department. Everything in this room was super clean, super tight, super nitty. But that didn't stop us from going crazy with the Lysol. You guys should do the same. Bring a can of Lysol. Go on and go crazy with it. It's just going to give you a little bit more peace of mind. And, well, it's always a good idea to just take that little extra precaution step. So bring a can of Lysol. Go crazy with it. Spend the whole bottle. Spray the whole bottle. And you're going to have just a little bit more peace of mind. What's up, fishes? Welcome back to the channel. This is vlog number 14, and Jesus Christ, have things have changed since the last time we spoke, right? I mean, this whole pandemic has shut everything down. It shut down bars, casinos, card rooms, even my weekly home games. Those have been shut down till further notice. And I, I think the only thing that remains open is your mom. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, though, if we want to try to beat this pandemic, we need to continue wearing our face masks. We need to continue practicing our social distancing, which is something that's going to come in handy if you're like me and want to come to Las Vegas. So if you are planning on coming to Las Vegas anytime during this pandemic, hopefully this video helps you out on what to expect, what's open, what's closed and see if coming to Las Vegas right now is a good option for you. So stick around and let's get right to it. All right, fishers, here we are walking the casino floors, walking the Las Vegas Strip. And one thing that's really noticeable, one thing that's very obvious is that it is dead. Dead, 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 dead. I mean... <laughs> In a comical way, you cannot spell funeral without the word fun in it. So if you're coming to Las Vegas to have some fun, you're going to have to bring some fun with you. Bring some people, bring some drinks, and you're going to have to have fun on your own. Because, because if your plan is to come to Las Vegas and, and make some friends here, most likely it's not going to happen. Everybody here is wearing their face masks. The casinos are very vigilant, very strict on that. So if they see somebody without a face mask, they go on and stop them real quick and they don't let them proceed a foot further until they put a mask on. But that's something we didn't have to worry about. 99% of the people were wearing face masks. Everybody was following that rule. Literally everybody. We didn't have a problem. The only times we did see people without face masks were out on the street, which I guess it's a little bit understandable, but they would put them back on whenever they'd be around people. Anyways, as far as poker goes, poker's been pretty non-existent during the week. There's only a handful of casinos that offer poker, including this one, the Bellagio. One, three tables, three, five tables, and five, ten tables for those who are really balling. Anyways, uh, most of these casinos, most of these poker rooms are only open during the weekend and they get crowded. That's what one of the floor men told us. So if you're planning on playing poker, the weekends would probably be better for you, but you do run a higher risk of getting contagious with the virus. Even though everybody seemed to have been having a great time, every casino had their safety measure, like this one right here where they would have sanitation wipes. You can go on and get one or two or three or however many wipes you needed to wipe down a machine, to wipe down a table, to wipe down your chips, to wipe down your seat, whatever it is you needed to wipe down, they had wipes. Uh, a lot of these casinos were pretty good on that. Some of them had wipes like this one. Some casinos had uh, sanitizer dispensers everywhere along the whole casino. Most of these casinos also had complimentary face masks in case you didn't, you didn't have one or you wanted to come in without one. Different safety measures to provide a more safer experience for their customers because ultimately that's what they want. They want their customers to feel safe, safe enough to come in and spend their hard earned moolah, their dinero. Las Vegas was built on losers money, so if they can make you feel comfortable, they will. The win had an extra safety measure. Every person that walked in would get a temperature check, but nobody would walk up to you and check you. 
you would get checked automatically. They had these guns that look like radar detector guns, like the cops use for the for the speeding people. They had those type of guns pointed right at the entrance. So as soon as you walked in, it took your temperature. And if your temperature was above 100, then you would just have to wait for a few minutes and then get re-tempered again. And if then you would your temperature would be lower than 100, you can walk in. But if it indeed came back 100 plus again, then you would not be allowed to go in. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, aside from all the sanitation spots, all the sanitizer spots, all the pumps, all the wipes, all the everything, I thought that was actually pretty damn cool. All right, guys, so we're going to be approaching the last hotel I'm going to be doing a walk around through because this is going to be my home for the next three hours. Yes, finally, I get my itch scratched. Uh, the moment I've been waiting for since I've been here. Time to play some freaking poker, man. Hell freaking yeah. This casino here offers a 1-3 and a 2-5. And they covered their whole tables with plexiglass as well. You need to sanitize your hands before you sit down. Every person that gets up off that seat, there's another person that comes right away, wipes it all down, cleans the plexiglass and whatnot. So I go on and I take 300 of my hard earned dollars, give it to the cashier, exchange it for some chips and let the games begin. <laughs> For our first hand of the night, we look down at Jack Queen offsuit on the under the gun plus one. I go on and I bump it up to 12 bucks and everybody folds except the small blind. He decides that he's priced in and he puts the remainder $11 and we go heads up to see a flop. The flop is deuce nine queen. I go on and I hit top pair. Our opponent on the small blind, he decides to check and I put in a continuation bet of $20. Our opponent on the small blind thinks about it for about half a second before he makes the call and we go heads up to see a turn. The turn is a great card, it's another queen. Our opponent on the small blind, he checks one more time and I'm looking to trap, I'm feeling a little trappy. I go on and check back, we go on and see a free river. The river's a four, and where I come from, that is basically called a brick. Our opponent probably figures that he has me beat since I did check the turn when the second queen came out, and he decides to go all in, $42 to be exact, and boy, I cannot call fast enough. I go on and reach one of my chips, throw it in the middle, indicating that I call, and of course, I am good. Our opponent doesn't even show his hand. He mucks it, then he gets up, and he GTFOs out of that table. For this next hand, I look down at Ace-10 offsuit on the low jack. I go on and put in a bet of 12 bucks, which seems to be working for me. I've been putting in 12 bucks every single time, and that seems to be working for me. And if it's been working for me, then why change it? Anyways, our opponent on the small blind, he decides one more time that he's priced in, and he puts the remainder 11 our opponent on the big blind, he makes the call, and our opponent on the under the gun, he decides to come along for the right as well, and we go four ways to the flop. The flop is deuce nine six. We go on and miss absolutely everything. We hit nothing, and our opponent in the small blind, big blind, and under the gun, all three of them check to me, and even though I didn't hit anything, I am the original aggressor, and I just cannot contain myself. I go on and I put in a continuation bet of $40. $40 bucks into a pot of about $40 and our opponent on the small blind folds, our opponent on the big blind folds, and our opponent on the under the gun, he's seen the movie Frozen because he goes on and he lets it go as well. We go on and we take a pot and we're feeling freaking great. For this next hand, I look down at pocket nines and the under the gun plus one. Our opponent in the under the gun, he's already put in a bet of $21 and now it's action on me. I can either call this and price everyone in or raise it. I decide to raise it and not price everybody in. I go on and make it 40 bucks and everybody folds. Everybody folds except our original aggressor who now, he looks down at his hand and he doesn't like his hand anymore. 
so much that he goes into the tank. years later now i can see why this guy's been taking a long ass time to call i've caught him many times opening weak hands out of position and if he calls this he's only gonna have 20 dollars left behind so he knows this is basically an all-in anyways after a long ass time he decides to make the call and we go heads up to see a flop the flop is deuce 5-5 five five and our opponent immediately goes all in i immediately go on and i call and the turn is a king and the river's a seven. No help to him, he goes on and sees my pocket nines and they are good. I go on and take a massive pot and we're feeling freaking great. For this next hand, I'm under the gun and I look down at ace 10 suited. I go on and put in a bet of 16 bucks which everybody folds except our opponent on the big blind. He goes on and he makes the call then we go heads up to see a flop. The flop is queen five ten. We go on and hit bottom pair with an awesome kicker and our opponent checks to us. We go on and fire a continuation bet of 16 bucks which our opponent on the big blind snap calls. He snap calls us and we go heads up to see a turn. The turn is a king. Our opponent decides to get froggy and lead out for 40 bucks. $40 into a pot of 60. And now I got some thinking to do. I gotta put in another 40 bucks to see a river into a pot of 100. Not only do I have bottom pair, but I also have a straight draw, a flush draw, and a royal flush draw to go along with it. I'm doing my math and I don't think I can fold this. I have roughly about 58 outs and there's no way I'm gonna be able to fold this. I go on and make the call and we go heads up to see a river. The river's a stupid ace. Holy smokes, what a freaking gross run out. What a disgusting card. Not only did I miss my royal flush, I missed my flush, I missed my straight, and even though I have two pair, there's four to a straight on the board. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Our opponent, he goes on and fires off another bullet of $60, 60 bucks. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it, and I actually take a pretty damn good minute thinking about it. Oh, man, what a, oh, what a nasty situation. Anyways, I decide to fold. I feel like folding was the right thing to do here. Until I see his hand, he shows me king four. He freaking bluffed me out. Holy smokes, nothing gets your blood boiling faster than somebody showing you a bluff on a big ass pot. Holy smokes. Now on the outside, I, I, I tell him, good hand, sir, nice hand. But it took everything inside me for me not to be like, <laughs> Why am I such a damn fish? Ugh. For this next hand, I look down at not one, but two juicy aces. Now I haven't been playing poker for such a long time. It's been months and I'm still pretty sure though that aces is the best starting hand. Well, I don't have time to look that up because our opponent in early position decides to put in a bet of $30. I got my aces and I go on and I re-pop them. I make it $70. He thinks about it for half a second before he goes on and just shoves all of his money in and we go heads up to see a flop. The flop is brick, brick, brick. The turn is a brick and the river is also a brick. I go on and take my opponent for a little bit under a hundred bucks. and We're feeling freaking great. For this next hand, I look down at Queen A soft suit on the button. Our opponent under the gun, he decides to put in a bet of $6, and I go on and put in a re-raise, a manly raise. I go on and bump it up to 16 bucks. Our opponent on the small blind calls, our opponent on the big blind calls. Of course, our opponent under the gun, he makes the call and we go four ways to a flop. The flop is queen seven deuce. Our opponent on the small blind, big blind, as well as our aggressor on the on the under the gun, they all decide to check. And there's no checking on my end. I go on and put in a bet of 35 bucks, which all three of them decide to fold. Good fold, I hit top pair with monster kicker and I get another 60 bucks pushed my way. 
Hell freaking yeah. All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As for me, I'm on my way back to LA. I got a three hour drive ahead of me and I'm going home with a whopping $331. 31 of those $331 is profit yes sir your boy over here coming home a winner but i feel dumb guys i feel freaking stupid because i lost most of my winnings in one hand one hand i was over 200 dollars in profit and i just managed to all that shit up so kudos to me right so what happened is first off if you guys ever go to las vegas and uh, around this time and you go play at the venetian just know that the Venetian poker room closes at one in the morning. And what does that mean? That means that there's gonna be a last hand. They actually announced the last rotation. So everybody has the chance to become the, the, D, the button one last time. And what that does is that everybody goes on and widens their range by everything. People are playing anything. They don't even have to have cards. They could be playing with two napkins and they'll call. Just It's the last rotation, I'm already getting my chips. I'm counting my chips. I'm about to go and the last hand I go on and I get the pocket queens. I get the pocket queens on the big blind and everybody else limps in. Our opponent on the cutoff, he decides to put in a raise. He raises it to 15 bucks and I look down, I have pocket queens, there's no way I can just call. If I call, I'm gonna price everybody in. I go on and I rebump them. I rebump to $40, $40, bucks. that gets the job done. Everybody else folds except our opponent. Our opponent goes on and he looks at his hand and he says, F it, I'm all in. He gets his chip stack and he throws it all in the middle. I'm looking at his chip stack and I'm counting it and I count about 80 something bucks and I already have 40 bucks in there. So in my in my mind, I'm thinking, I gotta put in an, an extra 40 something bucks. All right, we can do that. I get one of my chips, I toss it in, indicating that I call. Uh, he turns over king seven and hits a freaking seven on the flop. Boom, just like that. How did I lose so much money? Because when he went all in, he splashed the pot. He got his chips, he kind of threw them all in there. And there was a black chip under all those $5 chips and single dollar chips. There was a red chip, a, a black chip in there. That's a hundred bucks and I didn't see that. That's why you shouldn't pl splash the pot, but I, I didn't get to see that. But would I have folded if I knew it was a hundred and something dollars in there rather than just an extra 40 something? I don't know. I don't know. I've folded queens before, uh, but that was in tournament and you know, I just, it's, I don't know. I don't know if I would have folded, probably not, but it just more salt on the wound. And man, I ended up losing almost 200 bucks. That was almost my whole profit. Like I said, I cashed out for 331 and we called it a day. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. And if you did, go on and go on and do me a favor. Just go on and smash that like button. Make it turn blue and subscribe. Before I go, I want to go on and give out a big, big, big shout out to Prime Printing. Prime Printing hooked it up with this amazingly freaking cool this freaking cool mask i wore this mask the whole time it's a really good quality mask it's double layer and there's a little part where you can put like a filter in there of some sort so anyways if you go on and comment on the section below letting me know what city and state you saw this video at i'll go ahead and enter you in the raffle to to go on and win some of these bad boys i'm gonna go ahead and give a few of them away a few face masks away because you know, we can't go anywhere now without them. We can't go to the store without a face mask. We can't do anything. So leave a comment. Where are you, where are you watching this video? What city and state? And well, I'll see you guys later.